Welcome to the Poop and Pin Podcast. My name is Megan Nodecker and I'm a knitwear designer from Abbotsford, British Columbia, Canada. Uh, you can find me on Ravelry as Knit Poop and Pin, on Instagram as Poop and Pin, and in the Poop and Pin Ravelry group. Um, today is January the 10th. It is episode 45 and it is snowing outside. <laughs> um, I don't know if you can see it. Oh yeah, you can see it. Oh yeah, it's starting to really come down now. Um, <laughs> Might not be very exciting to some people um, who already have too much snow, but here in the Fraser Valley near Vancouver, we don't get a lot of snow. Um, we kind of get slush most of the time where it tries to snow and then it doesn't and it's wet and damp and gross, um, but it's for real snowing right now and it's sticking to the ground. Um, it'll probably be on tomorrow. It might even gone this afternoon but for now it's very exciting and very pretty <laughs> all the trees are kind of covered oh it's lovely <laughs> um this podcast is about knitting it's a knitting podcast knitting design um i share some of my works in progress and my finished objects if you are a returning viewer thank you so much for coming back and joining me today um and if you're new i i hope you like it <laughs> Uh, first off, I'm just going to do a rundown of the things we have going on in our Ravelry group, which is Pip and Pin Podcast. Pip and Pin? No, it's just Pip and Pin. <laughs> just Pip and Pin on Ravelry. Um, and we have a couple, we have a couple of knit-alongs going on right now. First off, we have the Rainforest Knit-Along, which is um, a knit-along for any of the patterns for our newest book, Rainforest Knits. Um, as well as Cat Bells and Mayma, which were the other two sweater patterns that were released last year. Oh yeah, last year. Um, <laughs> the new year happened. Christmas happened. Happy holidays to everyone. I hope you had a great time. <laughs> we had, I'm going to pause for a minute. We had a really lovely holiday. Um, it was pretty relaxing. It was good weather. We kind of went out and did lots of stuff. Um, we had a campfire on New Year's Day, which is like one of my favorite traditions. We did presents. We went to my in-laws house. My dad was up from Mexico, so he came and we had, a, we didn't cook, but we had a Christmas dinner at our house. It's too hard to cook in our house. Um, so we just ordered, ordered in chicken. Um, <laughs> no, it was really, really lovely and relaxing and um, everyone had a great break, but it was very nice to kind of get back into the swing of things. Um, Georgia went back to school this week. Justin went back to work this week, uh, except for today, because he can't work in the snow. And yeah, I really hope that um, that you had a really good holiday as well. <laughs> Anyways, back to the stuff that's going on, the rainforest knit along. Um, it's wrapping up. There's 10 days left, I guess. it. I extended the deadline, so it was going to end at on December 31st, but I extended it until January 20th. Um, so yeah, if you are working on any of those patterns, you still have some time to finish them up because there are some really great prizes. There is, um, there's three skeins of yarn from Sassy Strings. There's a making things or not making things. It's, um, the making magazine, the forest, um, edition, which was donated by 88 Stitches, um, and then there's some other goodies as well. And there's not very many entries yet, so um, if you need a little push, this is it to finish up and get your finished objects posted in the finished objects thread. Um, we also are running the Wintertime Mini Along, and this is a make along for um, any projects that use mini skeins or scraps or whatever, just lots of little bits of color. Um, I started this one because we released the sprocket sock pattern, which I designed with minis in mind. Um, so if you do use that pattern, you get two entries. So um, you just post your project twice in the finished objects thread. Um, and that one goes all the way until Valentine's Day, so up until February 14th. 
that one is running too. For more information on all the rules and stuff, just follow the link in the description box below. Um, other thing that's happening, I was going to wait, but I decided I'm going to show you now. <laughs> I have a new release coming out on Tuesday, so it's not ready yet if you're watching this right away. Um, it's not up on Ravelry yet, but it will be on Tuesday, January the 14th. And the new pattern is this guy. This is the Wishing Rock Shawl. And it is a kind of a triangle. <laughs> It is a triangle. It is shaped like a triangle, but you don't knit it as a triangle. You actually knit it as kind of this diamond shape and then fold it in half. So you knit it from one end, increase, 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 get to the middle and then start decreasing again here. And then you fold it in half and add some fun tassels. Um, the yarn I've used for this is Midnight Cravings Lush. Um, let's see if I can remember, I made show notes. Let's see if I can remember the names of the colorways off the top of my head. Um, Petal is this light one, I think. <laughs> Wildflower is the dark one, and I'm pretty sure the speckly one is Secret Garden. So yeah, basically what you do is you're switching yarns every two rows to get these fun little stripes and you use one yarn throughout the whole thing and just one skein um, of this, I've used the speckly yarn as my kind of main color that goes through the whole thing. And then half of it, you use one contrasting color, the other half you use a different contrasting color. Um, yeah, and it makes this, this lovely thing. My favorite thing about this, I made a shawl in this shape a year ago or so and I really really like it um, because it's fingering white it's very light it's very drapey but because it's doubled it's also very warm and not like you have to wrap around a bunch of times or anything like that you just kind of like it's just very easy this is kind of how I do it set up a little bit and then the tassels um, just kind of weigh it down so I, the one that I made before it was in yellows. I don't know if you've watched before, you may have seen it. And I wore that thing to death. <laughs> so I wanted to take kind of that concept and make my own design. So I did. Um, also that pattern that I made isn't actually available anymore. So and just a nice, simple, relaxing pattern uh, to use up a three skein, if you have a three skein set. Also, I was thinking and this is something that I might do with some of my Yarn Ink Advent minis, is this would be a really great project for scraps or for um, like mini schemes or things. You can kind of just change the colors, like still do the stripes, but change the colors kind of whenever. I don't know. <laughs> it could become something very, very interesting. So. Um, yeah, that is the Wishing Rock Shawl. It is coming out January 14th. And if you use the code 25WISH um, when you check out, then you can get 25% off the pattern. And that is a YouTube channel exclusive code. So I think it's a little bit more than my Instagram one. <laughs> So use that one, 25 wish, and you will get 25% off the pattern um, until January 21st. Huh. So what I am wearing, um, moving right along, this is one of my favorite cardigans in the whole world. <laughs> it is the Quinell cardigan. It was designed by me, um, and this is using the fiber company Erin More Light. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> fiber company Erin More Light. I don't remember the colorway name but whenever I share projects with you um I really love Ravelry um <laughs> and I keep track of all my projects 
So if there's a question that you have or are wondering what I've used, maybe not so much for some of my older ones, like older projects, but um, everything, at least in the last year or two, I've kept track of. So um, my yardage will be in there, the yarns that I've used, the pattern I've used. So if you have any questions, um, you can always go to my Ravelry page and look at my projects and you will see um, you will see all the information there. So the colorway for this is on my Ravelry project page is what I was getting at. <laughs> it's, um, this is a, probably my, the, like when I designed this pattern, I had made a few sweater patterns before and a couple other patterns. Um, but this was the pattern that really made me feel like a designer that I was kind of coming into my own style and, and, photography and like everything kind of just came together. Um, so that's probably why this sweater has a big place in my heart. It's also just so long and so cozy and so comfy. Um, and it was, I think it would have been more fun to knit if I wasn't on a deadline, <laughs> but it was a very fun and, and easy knit as well. All these, um, there's kind of texture that goes all the way down and it goes to about in between my, right in mid thigh, um, it ends. So it's quite long, but all of this patterning that you see here is just knits and pearls. Four, four row repeats. So it's all very easy to, um, to memorize. You just kind of put your markers in and then you, you go along. Uh, yeah, so that is, that's what I'm wearing today. And I'm probably not gonna take it off all day because <laughs> it's snowing and cozy. Uh, since it has been a couple weeks, as I didn't podcast over Christmas or anything like that, uh, and I'm not going to apologize for that because it's Christmas, <laughs> I don't podcast when my family's home because I find it very awkward and it would be really hard to do because I'm in the middle of my living room. I don't want to like kick everyone. They would have to go. They couldn't even really be in George's room because George's room is right off of the living room and she has like pocket doors that you would be able to hear everything anyway. So they would actually have to go, if Justin and Georgia were both here, they would have to go to our bedroom. And um, there's snow just fell off the tree. <laughs> I wouldn't want to do that. So I just don't, I just don't ever plan to podcast while my family's home. Justin is out right now. So that's why I'm doing it now. Um, yeah, so I do have quite a few finished objects to share. Um, not quite a few. I have a couple. <laughs> One of them um, is actually my Advent Sprocket Socks. I think I showed them on the last podcast. It was a pair of Sprocket Socks that I was knitting for myself out of my Yarn Ink Advent Calendar. Um, I did finish them. They turned out really lovely. I'm not going to show them to you though. <laughs> only because they are, I, I did, I've been wearing them and um, they haven't been washed or blocked or anything and I couldn't find one of them. So, <laughs> but I did do a video of all of the socks that I knit in 2019. Um, so I took part in the Grocery Girl Sock Bash and I did one pair of socks a month for the whole year and then some. So I just made a video um, of I think I posted it at the beginning of the week of all of my socks that I knit. Um, that pair is in that video. So if you really want to hear me talk about it more and see it, um, it's there. You can also take a peek at my Ravelry project page because I do have a picture up there. Um, yeah, so there was that, but I'm not going to show it. <laughs> the other finished object that I have is George's sweater. So this is the flax sweater by Tin Can Knits. Um, the only thing I omitted the garter um, thing at the top here because I wanted it to match Justin's sweater. Um, <laughs> so I knit Justin an orange sweater like this for Christmas. I gave it to him before Christmas, but for Christmas. And then I made George a matching one as a surprise. Um, and that was the funnest present to watch her open because it was all, it was all wrapped up. She didn't know, like I didn't even take her measurements or anything. She had no like inkling that I was knitting her a sweater. I just kind of based it on another sweater that she had. So I kind of knew how big it should be. Um, 
but she opened it up and her eyes just like went wide and she got so excited and she looked at dad she was like buddy <laughs> she was stoked she loves she loves going adventuring with her dad so on new year's day when we went out to the river and had our fires she like made sure that they were wearing their matching sweaters and i had orange socks on because i also had to match and <laughs> i was wearing my orange hat so we were a whole family of matchy match um and she loved it so this uh again it's the flax sweater um, by tin can knits it's the most amazing sweater pattern um if you're looking for something, if this is your first sweater that you're knitting, or if you're looking something for kids, um, it's just it's just a really, really great sweater pattern. Um, I kind of fudged the, the gauge and things like that because that's what I do. I think I made the six to eight size, but ended up with something more like something a little bit smaller, which is exactly what I wanted. Um, yeah, and the yarn that I used, I used Drops Nord Mix, which is the yarn that I used, the same yarn I used for Justin's sweater, which is like an alpaca nylon um, wool. Really, really lovely yarn to work with. I held it double throughout. And then I also had, you won't be able to tell, but I also had some Knit Pick Stroll in the same kind of orange color. Um, it just wasn't as um, like, it was just slightly different, not heathered in quite the same way. Um, but I, I knew that like, I just wasn't going to use it. I wasn't going to make orange socks really. I don't know. It just, it, it's been sitting in my stash forever. I just thought this would be a good opportunity to kind of use it up. So I did, I held one strand of the Nord and one strand of the knit picks all throughout the body. And then I think the sleeves, yeah, the sleeves are just the, the Nord, um, but you can't tell the difference. <laughs> and then the um, cuffs and everything, these are slightly different than Justin's. I just wanted to make it a little bit, a little bit girlier. <laughs> um, so this is um, six and seven. I think it's her clover base. And it was the yarn that I got last year. Um, I did an advent, a 12 day advent from her and it came with a full skein at the end. And this was the full skein of yarn. Um, which is this gray with kind of pops of purple and dark bits and pink. Um, and so I just held that double for the cuffs and collar and, and all that fun stuff. And then just some little gray buttons. So she, she loves it. She wears it. She is very, very excited to be matchy match with her dad. <laughs> and then the third thing that I finished, um, doesn't have a pattern, but there are patterns out there. You would just have to search Ravelry. I just kind of made it up because I did. This is the second iteration of my blue headband. <laughs> I've made one of these before, but it was kind of thinner and more of like a, like a, it was more like a headband and this is more ear warmers, which is what I wanted. So I, I did end up frogging the first one because I needed the yarn um, because this one I actually did, it's a double. I just knit it in the round. Um, so it's double thick and then you kind of split it and twist it and do some funny things to get that nice little detail at the top. Um, the yarn here is Poppy Yarn and Fiber Ishinmore Erin in the London Fog colorway. And this I picked up at Knit City last year specifically for this project. Um, I'll try it on to show you what it's like. Usually I wear it with, cause I wanted something when I walked door to school that I could wear with my hair up. I can't, I mean, I have too much hair. I can't wear a toque with my hair up. So I wanted a headband or like ear warmers so that I could wear my hair up. Be a lazy mom with a top bun <laughs> with my headband so I could be warm. Yeah. Well, I guess it looks kind of cute with hair down too. <laughs> but this is just exactly what I wanted it to be. Um, super cozy, big, floofy, cute. Yeah, and the yarn is really lovely. Um, I want I want a sweater in this yarn. It's so lovely. <laughs> I might have to do that. Maybe that'll be on my Knit City list next year. It's just so like squishy and tweedy and I just love tweeds. I love hand dyed tweeds too because they have that like 
the tonalness of a hand dyed yarn with the tweed. I just think it's such a lovely combination. So yeah, that is my headband number two. Again, I don't have a pattern for it, but I'm sure you can find, I know that there are patterns for something very similar to this on Ravelry. You just have to look for it. <laughs> I think that's it for finished things. I thought I had more, but I, no. I think I finished most of the things that I wanted to finish before Christmas. Ty and I have some new things. I have three new things and haven't seen any of them. <laughs> so these are a pair of socks I started on Christmas day um, because I really, I needed something easy to do while visiting with people. Maybe it was earlier than that. I think it was like Christmas Eve or something. But I just needed something to work on, you know, while visiting family, something easy. Um, and this is actually a pair of socks that I've had in my brain since last Christmas. <laughs> um, I and I actually mostly finished one of them, so I'll show you that one first. And these are the Coffee Talk socks by Tracy Miller. And I really, really love this pattern. Um, the yarn is Flock Fibers, um, Take a Hike Sock, and this was a Christmas set that I got last year. Um, Santa always puts um, socks in everyone's stockings. Um, last year he brought me sock yarn to make my own. <laughs> so I, when I bought this yarn, I had this pattern in my head for it, and it worked out perfectly um i love this this it's it's just kind of christmasy enough to be like oh christmas socks but not you know i don't feel weird working on them right now and now that i'm not doing sock bash you know i'll probably not finish these right away these are kind of now my car socks um and i don't have any intention of super speedily finishing them up but i'll be able to wear them outside of Christmas. So that that's nice. And because this yarn is, um, it's like a tonal kind of light gray base. And then it has nice speckles of red and pink and green. And then it came with this mini um, of this nice vibrant green. And this one is all I want for Christmas is you like the sheep. And this mini was evergreen. Um, yeah, really, really like the pattern. I really easy to memorize and it just has such a nice effect. And I tried it on and it fits really nicely because it's all squishy and textured and patterned. Um, and this is how far along I am on the second sock. <laughs> so just a cup and a little bit. But again, I don't have crazy intentions of finishing these, but I am very much enjoying just working on them as I get a chance. Um, I mean, the, this one still needs a kitchen or toe, but <laughs> you know, I worked on this while we were um, at the movies and uh, with family and things. So it was, it was nice and easy to, to work on in that sense. Um, it's still interesting, which is what you want, right? And then my second one is also a pair of socks. And now I tried so hard. <laughs> I tried so hard to make this not be a pair of socks. But sometimes the yarn just wants to be what it wants to be. <laughs> this is, I'll show you the yarn first. This is Red Fox Fibers Wild Sock in the grizzly colorway. And it's this beautiful, beautiful, coppery, glowy, coppery loveliness. And I got this, this was actually a gift from the dyer um, at Knit City. And she gave it to me with this super amazing pom-pom. Um, so my original intention was to make a hat. I wanted to make a hat with this pom-pom and it was gonna be super cute. And I even had the pattern kind of in my head. I knew what I wanted it to look like. I tried it three times. It just didn't work. It just didn't look right. Um, so I ripped it out. And then I tried, like I thought maybe it was because the yarn was too thin and it's just not the hat that I was feeling. 
Um, so I tried doubling it. It still wasn't, just wasn't what I was thinking. <laughs> so I made socks. <laughs> and I'm not sad that these are socks because they're turning out so beautiful. It's just not what I had intended and that's totally okay sometimes. <laughs> and so here is my sock. This is a new pattern that I'm working on. It's not released yet. Um, kind of, no, it's not even the same, the same pattern as I was thinking of for the hat. It's something entirely different. Uh, and I think that's okay. <laughs> so I'm just, I'm just about at the toe of the first one here. And I'm really loving how this is knitting up. I'm very excited about these ones. Um, I'll probably, this feels like a pattern that I'll probably be releasing quite soon. Um, I know lately I feel like I've been working on things and kind of holding on to them and not releasing them right away. And um, like this one I finished in the summer. The testing has been done since August. <laughs> um, and it's finally getting released now. Um, this one, I feel like you will be seeing probably in the next couple months. I'm gonna, as soon as I'm done the first one, I will block it and actually write out the pattern. And as I'm working on the second one, get it tested. And so I think it will be out fairly, fairly quickly. And I'm very excited about it. I don't know. I don't know what else to say. This yarn is just bananas. It's so pretty. <laughs> oh, yeah. There's that coppery glow. You know where some yarn just glow? This yarn just glows. Um, if you haven't had a chance to check out Red Fox Fibers, I highly suggest that you do. She is a, a local dyer, well, local, <laughs> BC Alberta, <laughs> I call local. So she is from Alberta. Um, so if you get a chance, please go check her stuff out because it's, it's lovely. Uh, and then the last thing I'm working on is kind of my big project. And this is oh, falling off my needles. <laughs> this is the Once and Floral. This is the Once and Floral sweater by Max and Sear. And it's this beautiful color work, yoked rose loveliness. <laughs> this is the first time I've ever made a color work yoked sweater like this for myself. Um, I, I did one, I think two years ago, maybe for Georgia, um, but I am super, super happy with it. Um, I'm making it a little bit oversized. So I kind of fudge the numbers a bit, <laughs> a lot actually. I find I do this when I knit, like when I'm knitting a, pa a pattern that I'm designing, I mean, obviously I get to make everything up so it doesn't matter. But when I knit things from other designers, uh, I have a tendency to almost just use their patterns as a base. <laughs> so, oh, my computer just died. That's fine, but uh, now I won't be able to see anything. <laughs> That's okay. Anyways, um, so I, I cast on for the, okay, first off, my gauge is not what the pattern says. <laughs> and the sole reason for that is my Addy interchangeable set, the smallest needle size is a US 4. Um, I'm pretty sure the pattern calls for you to use US 3 throughout the whole thing. And I don't like the size three needles that I have and I was too lazy to go out and buy some new ones. Um, <laughs> I just really like using my interchangeables. I like being able to put a longer cord on and like, I just like them. So I, I think I need to invest in like some Chalgu interchangeables or something because I need some smaller sizes. Um, but so that was my reasoning. <laughs> I didn't want to not use my interchangeables. So I'm using a size bigger. Um, I also think I knit looser than Max anyways. So my gauge is is slightly larger. Um, that being said, all I really had to do was figure out what size I needed to knit. Now, I also wanted, I wanted the size medium, 
but I wanted a bigger neckline. If I looked at some of the some of the patterns or some of the project pages, sorry, um, I find the neck a little bit high. And if the neck's too high and too like tight in, I know I'm not gonna wear it or enjoy it. Um, so I really wanted to make sure that I did have that kind of deeper, more open neckline. So I actually cast on for the larger size, the um, the size large, uh, so I could get that just a little bit extra um, space. So I've, all the color work bits here is knit the largest size. Um, and I kind of had to fudge this bit, this last kind of, the last row that you do increases, you were supposed to do four increases per little section. I only did two. And then on the next round, I actually decreased some more stitches uh, to get back down to the medium size. Um, I didn't know if that was gonna work, but I've tried it on a couple times since then and everything seems fine. Um, also, there was no shaping in the body. And even though like I want this to be a kind of, not super oversized, but slightly oversized, kind of sweatshirty, like really comfy to wear kind of thing. Um, I find that with a straight body on me, because my, how do I work? What does my body look like? <laughs> I don't know I definitely have like curves so when I have a straight thing there's usually lots of extra fabric kind of right here um that makes me look a lot larger so I I wanted to kind of while still keeping the integrity of a sweatshirty style you know there's still positive ease in it for sure but I just wanted to take it in a little bit um to my waist and I have a very high waist so I um, just a little bit there, and then I'll probably gradually um, open it back up again, um, down into the hips. And I feel like that'll just give, like, still keeping, I think I have about three or four inches of positive ease, and I just wanted to keep that, just so that there's not, like, six inches and then two inches, which is kind of what happens usually with a straight body. Um, so yeah, I just tailored it a little bit um, to myself, and really, all you have to do if you want if you want to change something like that is is um i mean you can do math <laughs> that's the easy you know most accurate way to do it there's lots of ways that you can um add shaping in yourself just by your body shape doing a little bit of math um that's the best way to do it it's not the way i did it <laughs> i just kind of tried it on and did what I felt was right, uh, which has been the theme of this sweater. I <laughs> really hope it works out uh, because yeah, I've just been kind of, there's been very little planning. <laughs> I did do a swatch, but I did a swatch with a size three needle and I got gauge. Um, and then I decided to not listen to that at all and go up a needle size. I also really like, I don't know, if you've seen any of my fingering weight patterns, you will know that about a four or a five even for a garment is where I kind of like to live. Um, I don't know. I like I like how drapey it is. I just like how how it um, it's not stiff. The hide, I just like how it lays a little bit better. So that's just what it did. <laughs> oh, the yarn, the yarn that I'm using. Uh, I'll show it to you up here again. Sorry if I'm like out of frame. As I said, my um, my computer died, so I can't <laughs> I can't actually see what I'm doing anymore. Um, I've been using all Knit Picks yarn for this sweater. Um, the black is Knit Picks Stroll Tweed in Wellies Heather, and then this kind of creamy bit is Oyster Heather uh, Tweed as well. And then the kind of dark ready bits for the roses. Um, is Capretta in Ember's Heather. And I think that's, they're like, I think it's wool, cashmere, nylon. Don't quote me on that, check my Ravelry page. <laughs> um, and I'm really, really enjoying how these are knitting up and how they're working together. Um, one bonus about this tweed yarn and it both being Knit Picks tweed is they both have the same tweedy bits in them. So it's all this kind of brown and taupe and white and black tweed 
um, like the little bits. And so it, it flows very nicely from one section to another. Uh, added bonus, when I'm catching my floats, like there's some sections, especially down in here, there's some very long floats. So you do have to kind of catch your work a little bit. And um, because there's black in the white, because there's black bits in the white and white bits in the black, I mean, you can kind of see them. I haven't, I think I only blocked to here. So this bottom part isn't even blocked yet, but even if you could see a little bit of my float through the front, uh, especially because of my <laughs> loose gauge, <laughs> you can't really tell because the, the tweed kind of hides everything. Um, so that's an added bonus. I think I'm gonna use that to my advantage again if I ever do a sweater like this again. Um, yeah, I think that's totally awesome um, and a neat little trick. So if you do want to knit a sweater like that with longer floats, but are worried about being able to see where you catch them, use tweed yarn. Makes things better. <laughs> I don't know if it would work. Like, I don't think it would work with um, like a colorful tweed yarn or anything like that. But I think these particular ones work because all the colors that are in these two colors are in the tweed, you know what I mean? So the, there's black tweed in the white and then kind of white tweed in the black. So you can't tell what's tweed and what's, um, and what your float is. <laughs> That's my tip, tip of the day. Use tweed yarn. Use more tweed all the time. <laughs> As I'm looking at my, my ear warmers and my sweater and I was wearing my tweed cowl that I, that I made this morning, or I didn't make it this morning, I was wearing it this morning. <laughs> uh, anyways, so I think that's about it for today. Um, thank you again for, for joining me. I really hope you, I really hope you enjoyed yourself. Uh, if you did, make sure to like and subscribe to the channel um, so that you can see me more. <laughs> um, I just want to say thank you too to everyone that did watch the um, Socks of 2019 episode. It was a very popular one. I wasn't really expecting that. <laughs> um, so if you want to see some more like kind of special episodes like that, let me know. Maybe I'll do one for, uh, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what else I could do it for, but I could figure something out. Um, I was going to say I could talk about hats, but I don't actually have a lot of hats. So yeah, I couldn't talk about hats, but sweaters, maybe? I don't know. <laughs> Give me some ideas. So um, I hope you have a wonderful week. Um, I hope your weather is happy wherever you are. I'm quite excited about snow. <laughs> it says it's going to start raining at noon, but um, I don't know if I believe them. <laughs> All right. Have a wonderful afternoon or whatever. See you later. <laughs>